Hello and welcome to What Did I Miss? Where today I'm going over the fifth episode of Star Trek Lower Decks titled Cupid's Errant Arrow and looking for Easter eggs, references, and parasites. Before I get too much into it, please hit that like button and if this is your first time here, please subscribe for weekly Star Trek content. I just released a video essay on why Deep Space Nine is the best Star Trek and I highly suggest you check it out after watching this. This episode of Lower Decks follows Ensign Bradward Boimler and his new girlfriend, who is a little too perfect for Mariner's liking, as well as a friendly contest between Tendi and Rutherford. The episode shot straight to the heart of many Star Trek fans with all the callbacks, and I love finding them all to point out to you now. This is What Did I Miss? All right, so this is your spoiler warning for the episode and all things Star Trek. So if you don't want to know anything, go back and watch the episode and then come right back here. The main plot of the episode centers around the ship the Vancouver helping the Cerritos do a controlled demolition of a moon. Ensign Boimler's girlfriend, Barbara Brinson, is also on the ship and visits Boimler on the Cerritos. After meeting her, Ensign Mariner is convinced that something is off about her and begins to follow them around and incessantly investigate different theories as to her true purpose. Boimler starts to believe that his new boo is too good for him and becomes jealous of another crewman's relationship with her. In the end, it turns out that Boimler was infected with a parasite that caused his girlfriend to be attracted to him and she ends their relationship after procuring said parasite. Barbara Brinson was voiced by Jillian Jacobs, who starred for many years as Britta on the NBC show Community, and just recently starred in a very messed up episode of The Twilight Zone. Both Brad Boimler and Barbara Brinson have first and last names that start with the letter B. This type of alliteration is most commonly found in Marvel Comics characters' names, as Stan Lee, the creator of Marvel, used this technique often. Although not really a Easter egg, this is the first episode of the season to start without a cold open, and instead it starts right with the intro. Mariner mentions Q on Captain Picard Day. I explained the Q race in my last video on Lower Decks, and I'll link it here. But Captain Picard Day was a holiday organized on the Enterprise to allow the children of the ship to show their appreciation for the captain. An example of this day was shown in the Season 7 TNG episode, The Pegasus. At first, Mariner accuses Boimler of having a holodeck girlfriend, which he says he does not do anymore. We have seen this happen a few times on the holodeck. Uh, most notably, though, is probably Geordi LaForge. Uh, he had some pretty strong feelings toward a hologram of an engineer named Dr. Leah Brahms in the TNG Season 3 episode, Booby Trap. Boimler states that the man who he is jealous of is like a Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker Sprinkles. Charles Trip Tucker III was the very popular engineer of the original Enterprise run by Captain Archer, who would no doubt rather have a slice of pecan pie than a sundae. Mariner goes on a few rants uh, in this episode that have a lot of references, so I'm going to try and track as many as I can, but whatever I mess, just uh, let me know in the comments. Um, when she references sexy people in rompers that murder you for just going on the grass, She's referencing a very weird first season episode of TNG named Justice, which was kind of like a cross between Austin Powers and Gran Torino. She also mentions a salt succubus. Uh, this is a reference to a creature from the season one original series episode named The Man Trap, actually the first episode of the series to air. And there's also a drawing of this creature on her board later in the episode. She also mentions a changeling, uh, which is a race of shape-shifting beings of which Odo, the security chief of DS9 was, and they were also the main uh, controllers of the Dominion in the Dominion War. We see three shuttles, the Kitsilano, the Marpole, and the Fairview on the Vancouver. All three of these are names of neighborhoods in Vancouver, Canada. At one point, Mariner mentions that Barb could be a Philosian, this is a sentient plant species featured in the animated series episode named The Infinite Vulcan. When Mariner recounts an incident that she experienced while serving on the Quito, we get to see the ship, which turns out to be an Olympic-class medical vessel docked at Deep Space Nine. 
Since Deep Space Nine was not designed by the Federation, it is the only Federation space station that would have this design. When we see the crew, they are wearing the style of uniform shown during the Star Trek movie First Contact, as well as the later half of Deep Space Nine's run on TV. Her crewmate is referencing the events of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 6 episode Descent, in which Data's brother Lore becomes the leader of a rogue group of Borg and tries to get his brother Data to join him. Given that the star date of the episode The Descent is 46982.1 or the year 2369, and the start date of this episode is 57601.3 or the year 2380, we can see that it occurred 11 years ago. So it is now obvious that Mariner has been in Starfleet for a good while, perhaps as long as 15 years or maybe even longer. Mariner also makes a comment about how it seems to be a new thing every week with these guys when talking about the Enterprise. This is obviously a comment about the non-serialized nature of TNG and Star Trek as a whole. And while TNG was mostly a week to week show, the episode that they're talking about was actually a two part season ending cliffhanger. Deep Space Nine is by far the most serialized version of Star Trek. Mariner tries to use a tricorder to disrupt Barbara's positronic brain when she thinks that she is an android. A positronic brain, as well as all of Data's inner workings, were major plot points in the first season of the show Picard. Okay, so again, I'm going to try and point out everything I see on the corkboard, but if you see anything that I don't point out, please let me know in the comments. It looks like there are pictures of two Klingon women on the board that could be Bator and Lursula, who were villainous Klingon sisters that appeared in Next Generation, as well as Deep Space Nine. It also looks like there is a picture of Humpback Whales, which is probably referencing the events of the fourth Star Trek movie, The Voyage Home. There is a picture of a Cardassian in plain clothes and a picture of a Romulan. I think these are callbacks to when Deanna Troy was altered to look like a Romulan in the TNG season six episode, Face of the Enemy. And the Cardassian is Kira Norris from Deep Space Nine, who is made to look like a Cardassian spy in the season three episode, Second Skin. Mariner even mentions a surgically altered Cardassian spy during her rant. I also see a member of one of the races of the Zindi species. The Zindi were a major antagonist throughout the Captain Archer Enterprise show's run. I also see a Suluban and Mariner mentions the race. This race was another big antagonist for the Enterprise and they were a genetically altered species that was able to move and communicate through time. I really like these races and I hope they use them more in future series. Mariner also mentions a Delphian. This is a reference to a TNG episode of the same name from the second season about a shape-shifting race whose queen befriends Wesley Crusher. There's also a picture of two purple aliens that I think are binars from the TNG season one episode 11001001. There's also a picture of a transporter clone of Barb. This happened to both Captain Kirk and Commander Riker. It happened to Kirk in the famous original series first season episode The Enemy Within. Uh, while Riker discovered a clone of himself had been stranded on a deserted planet in the sixth season TNG episode, Second Chances. There also looks to be a picture of nanoprobes within a bloodstream. This is what the Borg used to infect their victims and make them drones. Mariner mentions that Barb could be a reptoid. This could be a reference to the Gorn species who are reptilian and were featured in the first season original series episode, Time Trap, as well as the show Enterprise. Mariner also brings up that Barb could be a neural parasite. This was a reference to the TNG first season episode Conspiracy in which a race of parasites infect the high ranks of Starfleet. Barbara says she thought that Mariner could be a rogue holodeck character. While the Doctor on Voyager can move around the ship freely, most holograms are confined to the holodeck because of the use of hollow emitters there. The only reason that the Doctor can move around is due to a piece of 27th century technology he acquired in the Voyager Season 3 episode, Future's End. Barbara says she thought that Mariner was a Breen infiltrator. The Breen are a very mysterious species that showed up sporadically on Deep Space Nine and were never shown outside of their armor. There is a side plot about a crewman from the Vancouver trying to transfer to the Cerritos and he mentions how the ship is always doing ep epic things like calibrating the Dyson Spear. 
The Dyson Sphere is an enormous structure in space that is built around a star and was shown in the TNG episode Season 6 Relics that also featured Montgomery Scott. We are now at the halfway point of the first season of Lower Decks, and while there have been some highs and lows, I love this episode and I thought it was the best one of the season so far. Boimler is the most fun character to watch, and I really thought he had some good one-liners too, like his debris joke. I hope the series has a few more Boimler-centric episodes before the season wraps up. I also like Mariner's maniacal energy throughout the episode, and it was nice to see into her past a bit. We now know that she has had a long career in Starfleet, so I'm sure we will get to see more flashbacks in the coming episodes as well as next season. Rutherford and Tendi, though, are starting to become pretty boring for me. First of all, if Tendi is in medical, why is she always working with Rutherford, who is an engineer? I also do not see any type of relationship between the two of them back to Boimler and Mariner at this point, so it's almost like they are part of a short Trek series made for Lower Decks. Also, I understand that the plot of them obsessing over a T-88 device was a MacGuffin, but we don't usually see members of Starfleet obsessing over things anymore, as the human race was supposed to have evolved past the obsession of acquiring material wealth, which is why no one gets paid. They seem more like filler now, which is too bad because in prior episodes both had shown some life. But all in all, I still very much enjoyed this episode, and I hope for more Boimler episodes in the future. But you tell me, what did I miss? And if you still want to watch some Star Trek, check out my Deep Space Nine episode. And if you haven't yet, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?